Hello, everybody. Today is day 280, and we're reading from Matthew chapter 5 through the 7th chapter. Now, today we continue the hard and astonishing sayings of Jesus. These three chapters especially are noted as the uh, way that is difficult, impossible, frankly, for any person to accomplish. And so it brings about an awareness of a divine transformation that must take in our place. But it shows a radical distinction that must be of the character and nature of a true follower of Christ. He expands with details the uniqueness of this coming kingdom that he is proclaiming. He, and in reality, it is an upside down kingdom. It conflicts with the natural kingdoms of this world. He addresses the attitudes of a true Christ follower, introducing us to the attitudes of the heart, blessed, the, the, uh, the extremely uh, prosperous life that you now experience with the Spirit as we learn to uh, surrender to the distinctives of the kingdom. He talks about our response when you and I are reviled or persecuted or spoken evil of. In fact, he says, when those things happen, don't resist it, but rather rejoice and be glad because your reward in heaven will be great. This is not natural responses when you and I are mistreated. He says, don't resist an evil person who comes against you. When they slap you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. When they ask you to go one mile, you offer to go two. When someone asks to borrow, you and I must freely give to them. He says, don't turn away uh, those who come to you and request things. In, in fact, he says, if they steal from you, uh, offer them more. This is an upside down kingdom. It is conflicts with our human nature. It causes us to be, even repulses us when we consider this. He says, love your enemies, bless those who in fact curse you, pray for them that despitefully or spitefully use you. And all of this is obviously not the nature of our human heart. And it demonstrates this radical kingdom that Jesus is bringing and that it takes a divine transformation of your heart, my heart, in order for this to become the natural spontaneous response. He says, then the reason he says that you and I must have this nature is that you may, you and I may be sons of our Father who is in heaven. Jesus actually raises the bar when, when he gives the, the law as a backdrop. And many people suggest that, hey, when Jesus came, uh, you know, we have grace. And so it kind of diminished the hardness of the law. But in reality, Jesus increases or intensifies it. He says, um, it, he said, he's telling us, hey, listen, the law says don't murder. But I'm saying that if you are angry with your brother, brother uh, you've already committed murder in your heart. He says, don't commit adultery. It says, you know, if you commit adultery and, uh, you know, you've sinned, uh, now he's saying, hey, don't lust. Okay, I'm telling you, don't even lust. Don't look at a woman to lust after in your heart. Uh, and then he gives secrets to the kingdom that uh, are insights to the overcoming life. He says, uh, uh, pray in secret, uh, fast in secret, give in secret. When there's a tendency in our heart to do some of those things that others might recognize our spirituality or our righteousness or our devotion. He's saying, hey, listen, you do those things in secret so that only God may see what you're doing. And if you will do that, the result of that is that you are going to have an open reward. Um, do this in secret. Go into your prayer closet, shut the door, pray to your father who's in secret. And your father who sees what's done in secret will reward you openly. And so there's an open promised reward takes faith but God is saying you Jesus is saying you will be greatly rewarded because your motive is you're doing it to God alone and not for human attention uh, this in conflicts doesn't it with human nature and then he says forgive uh, so that you can be forgiven this is a huge one as he talks about that if you're not willing to forgive those who've sinned against you then your father who is in heaven will not forgive you don't store up earthly treasures, Jesus says. Lay, lay up your treasures in 
heaven and don't worry about this life and life issues and life troubles. Uh, life is more than food or clothing or things. Uh, but he gives this uh, option. He says, instead of worrying about those things, he said, you and I, you are to seek after the kingdom of God. Seek the kingdom of Christ first. And then he makes this promise that all these other things will be added unto you. He warns us of a narrow gate, a broad road, a difficult way, and that few find it. Um, there is no verse in the Bible that is any more pointed and challenging and at times even troublesome is this idea that there are few that actually get to this gate. There are few that ever actually find it. Those are the words of Jesus, not me. He's the one that said, few find it. And this demands, listen, when we read all of these things, demands radical conversion and a transformation of the heart. Only God can accomplish this. And that's why salvation is a miracle of miracles. It takes an old heart being changed into from a stony heart to a heart of flesh, and an old nature changed into a new nature, which the Bible tells us that you and I are new creatures in Christ Jesus. The old has passed away and everything else is made new. And it's while there's an instantaneous part of this, that is, there's a moment in which I give my life to Christ and my sins are forgiven. Salvation is also a lifelong journey. I've been saved, I'm being saved, and I will be saved when I enter into the kingdom of glory.